Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and we're answering publicly posted questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. This question was posted one month ago by Charles Johnstone, YouTube user Charles Johnstone, and it was posted on our video from about a month ago. Makes sense. Uh, entitled, How long does an EEOC investigation typically last? And Charles asked, Question. Actually, a couple of questions, if you don't mind. I don't. That's, that's why I'm here. Uh, does this timeline apply to a case that was before the, the DHR, the Department of Human Rights, which is a New York City agency? So this is going to, well, New York State agency. Um, New York City has a commission on human rights. Uh, so this is going to be potentially a bit more of a local question, just, just FYI. Uh, if the Department of Human Rights decides not to pursue it, your case, and says you don't have probable cause, and I don't sue New York State Supreme Court, you can ask the EEOC for substantial weight review because my case was cross-filed with both agencies. Will the EEOC treat, the, treat this like a new case or just review the Title Seven Eighty Eight claims? I hope this isn't too complicated, but this video brought me a lot of what-ifs, the same thing with an attorney from California. Uh, the same thing with an attorney from California who does good videos. Thanks for the service. You're welcome. Okay. So a couple of misconceptions in there. If you filed already with the New York State Department of Human Rights and you've already received no probable cause, that means very, very likely, 99% chance, I can never tell you absolutely, but it means that your state human rights law claims are extinguished, which sucks, right? You've now lost your New York State claims, which can be really valuable. So your next question, so, so I guess what I'm saying here is you don't actually don't have the option, uh, very likely, right? I can't, I can't speak in definites, but highly, highly likely that you've lost your chance to go on to state court. And that's okay. You cross that with the EEOC and you're asking if they will perform the substantial weight review that you're asking for as if it's a new case. Uh, potentially, that's what you're asking for. They don't always do it. Sometimes they refuse. Sometimes they just issue what's called a right to sue letter, right? So you're asking them, hey, listen, state agency made big mistakes here. I need you to do your job. I need you to do a review from the start of this claim, which is theoretically what the EEOC owes you, right? But not all EEOC offices and all, all EEOC employees are created equal. Many of them will just say, ooh, I don't have to work and just stamp it and give you right to sue letter, which will let you go on to federal court. Um, you also asked in there, will the EEOC treat like a new case or just review the Title VII ADA claims? So the EEOC is only going to review federal claims that actually go through the EEOC, right? So if you pled New York State human rights law, claims or New York City human rights law claims, and now you're asking for the EEOC to review them, they're just going to throw those out. They're like, first off, the, the state one was already adjudicated by the state agency. Second off, that's not what we do with the EEOC. We only do federal claims. So if your only federal claims are Title VII and ADA claims, which is Americans with Disabilities Act claims, then if those are the only federal claims, and those are the only claims the EEOC is looking at, they're not going to go look at the state law claims right? Which could be a bit confusing because in federal court, had you not already lost your state law claims, you could have brought federal claims, state claims, and even local claims all in one action in federal court, potentially. That is not going to be viable in the EEOC. They're only going to look at the federal claims. They're not as broad as the federal court system in, in terms of how they view these cases. So... I hope this clears up some of the what ifs. And if it doesn't, I'll check the comments in this video and I'll try to give you follow up answers. But this is getting a little hyper specific. And I think, um, I don't know if you're working with an attorney or not, but certainly it'd be probably, I recommend heavily that you do so if you're going on to federal court. Things are going to get. Uh, exponentially more complicated and confusing as they progress. And you're going to be much, much better off if you have representation. All right. Take care.